here's the deal. Everybody has their favorite kind of bird dog. I wanted a dog with a big engine, a natural retrieve, and a great off switch. And that led me to Andy, who led me to Chewy and Cash Setters. I knew I was going to get a great dog from Chewy, Whoa. but what I didn't realize was that I was getting a couple of lifelong pals in the process as well. Okay. This is our story. Sky Sky, come on. She's still in the shot. Hey. There. Stay there. Good girl. Um, we'll start that over then. Sit. Stay. Dead bird. When I spoke with Chewie, I was like, look, man, I, I know you raise dogs for northern grouse and pheasants. Get that chucker. And he's like, I, I guarantee you I can pick you a dog that'll be a good chucker dog. Stay. This guy is like a, a spent image of her father. You guys ready to go? Sky oh, and, and Django and Loki, they're all pretty much related. Ready, Loki? Good boy. Chewie came to us by way of Andy, who just said, like, this guy and this family, are, they're raising some really good dogs and uh, some really happy dogs. I was introduced to Llewellyn's probably in 2001 and uh, hunted behind him for the first time and I just fell in love with them. You know, just watching them work across the field, see their tail working, just hit their points strong. Just a, just a beautiful sight to see it was for us. There's just something about a cash setter. They're biddable, they're easy going, they don't take a whole lot of training. The natural ability, the natural instinct is there. They, they have that on-off switch. And then when they're out in the field, they're, they're just on fire. Come here. Here, 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 here. Oh, good girl. I think what we'll do is we'll cut through this middle field and then hunt the edge all the way across. We can split up. I can hike to the top. Guys, I guess we know where the birds are. There's gonna, there's gonna be birds in that thick, clumpy stuff and then up at this rim, I bet, too, right at the snow line. Little wet, little rainy. It's gonna be just fine. Should be good for the dogs to send some, send some birds up. Sky, you ready to rock and roll? One of the things that I love really about the hunting community in general is just like introducing different kinds of places and different kinds of species and different kinds of hunts to people. And so I wanted to bring the guys that have sort of brought me up in the, in the bird hunting world uh, to a place that was so special to me. The country um, that these birds live in just is just such a, phenomenal place to explore and, and I like kind of getting into the nasties as we call them. And really testing both your body and, and sort of the limits of your shooting too. Man, that is tough shooting. That wind's all wrong for her and... Here, here, here! It's truck riding right there. There's a lot of off-balance shooting. There's a lot of steep climbs. Nice and flat, just like Kevin explained it to me. Bitching and moaning about how steep it can be. It's hard, this is no joke, huh? No, it, I'll tell you, it's a lot rockier than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah. I didn't think it'd, there'd be this much uh, rolling off. But there's also a lot of hilarity to it as well, because there's just like, sometimes you'll have the most perfect point. Oh and the most beautiful approach and you'll step on a rock wrong and suddenly you're you know ass over tea kettle down the hill and you don't get a shot at those birds that to me is like the fun of it there's a reason that everyone thinks their bird's the king chuckers you're fighting footsteps getting nailed down so you can make a nice shot very uh, elevation terrain uh, a lot of loose rocks No bird, no bird, no bird. We didn't want to shoot that one there. Pretty gnarly. Django, here. Even though we didn't get a bird in the bag, man, it's uh, that's good stuff. 
and we've kind of put our our dogs to the test, our breeding stock, you know, just putting them on different terrain, different species. You know, this is first time out here wild bird chucker hunting. Got it. First wild chucker. Really, the dogs just adapt fantastically to, to everything. Django, let's go find another one, buddy. She's only known chucker hunting. And that was one thing that I was pretty adamant about. I was like, I need a chucker dog. How is that going to happen? Once I got hooked up with Chewy, man, it was just kind of on. Yeah, these dogs have been special too. They just, uh, they get a bad rap as chucker dogs, but for some reason. Okay, hunt them up. Let's go. This has been phenomenal. Like this dog can range. Um, she can also work close. And she just does a great job of, of finding birds, pointing birds, being steady on point and retrieving birds. Come on, Luke. When I went with a cash setter, I wanted something that's going to be a little closer working dog. 30 years ago, I broke my neck and was told by the neurosurgeon I'd never walk or use my arms again. This is kind of my way of flipping the bird to him. Uh, Loki is exactly what I wanted in that. He's a, um, an open country. He'll range out to that 200 yard mark. Um, in a little more rugged country, he's right in there in that 50 to 75 yard mark. And the beauty of it is he, he constantly comes back and checks in. Some of it's for water, some of it's just say, here I am, Dad. Um, and the birds are over this way. Three down. Marked right here. Good boy! It's been nice to see we can throw all three dogs together and have them honor each other and respect each other. Our relationship, you know, it's obviously been uh, uh, best friends, you know, almost from basically day one. When I go out solo, there's always a possibility I might not come back home. And I'm fortunate enough to have friends like Kevin and Chewy and, and who understand and allow me to go with them and kind of watch after me, which is, uh, which is a good feeling. A couple chuckers and uh, a couple quail. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a bird. Good one. Look at how long their legs are too, man. It's just yeah, insane. It's crazy. Nice to see birds, nice to see the dogs working. God, my knees hurt like hell going on the downhill. I don't know what that was. Welcome to semi-old age. 30? Yeah, it sucks when you hit 30, Kev. It, it is a downhill from there. Wait till you hit 54. The difference in how I'm evolving as a hunter is a lot has a lot to do with these guys. Hiking my young bones up to the top. We're gonna work this little finger and see if we can't push some birds down to the guys that are on the middle slope. Dead bird, dead bird, dead bird, dead bird. Good girl. Come here. And good girl. Good girl. That's a good girl. Oh. That'll work. <laughs> Those are pretty. Alley coil. Our first one, Django boy, come here. He's like, no. Nope. Come here, sit down. Here, here, sit. Yeah, look at, hey, give me that, you little turd. That is awesome. Beautiful. Just the ability to appreciate the moment a little more, to slow it down a little bit. It's sort of a, a cool brotherhood that is all centered around these dogs, right? I don't really know if we went for a setter in chucker country versus the setter breed itself. Started when I was hunting that dog, I realized that I don't need a different breed for this country out here. I'd put her up against any retrieving German dog out there. Is she gonna sit there and hold it like a like a Labrador till you say hand? No, but she's gonna bring it right to your feet, and that's perfect for me. Like she range is great. She's got a great engine, um, and then she's like this at the end of the day, which is is what you asked for, I think. Over the years, I've learned myself to uh, to just let the dog be the dog. Um, and kind of direct it to how you want to be as opposed to trying to make the dog be what you want it to be because that's never going to, it's never going to work that way. And I think my dogs realize that when we go out, it's going to be, it's time for us to be together um, and to work as a team. 
and then you see this right here. I mean, this is, this is what it's about to me. They just live to do it, and it's what they love, and you can see right now, you know, when we get back to the, the cabin or the house, they just want to be loved up, and you're a family member then. I don't want a robot either. I want these dogs to have goofy personalities. You know, they'll lay on their backs, and they're pretty vocal. You know, they make kinds of weird noises and all kinds of stuff, and they'll snuggle up with you in bed, and they'll be your best buddy. That's, like, way more important to me than a dog that can, uh, you know, be a robotic bird dog that just does the thing every day. She's also a really good bird dog, you know, I've been pretty lucky with the natural ability for a first time trainer um, to take this dog and, and uh, do what we're able to do is pretty awesome. My goal would actually have three custom guns made out of the same piece of wood um, and we could call them the three amigo guns because that's how I view us as three amigos.